This is the part of brew day where I wait for a plane to go by. What's up everybody, Just Brewing here. Welcome back to the home brewery for another grain to glass video. As you can tell, we're gonna do things a little bit different. Um, I've seen quite a few vlog style videos uh, uploaded over the last few weeks here in the home brew space. Um, and I wanted to give mine a shot. So hopefully this works out well. I'm, I'm not exactly the vlog type, but it's, it's a video nonetheless, right? Um, right now, I'm actually at the end of my mash. So let me go ahead and show you. Today's a special brew day for a few reasons. It's actually the first time I've brewed in about four or so weeks, so this is gonna be a lot of fun getting back into brewing after taking some time off for my wedding and honeymoon. So, um, and it's actually my very first lager as well. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, yes, lager as in we're using lager yeasts at lager temperatures. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. The recipe that I'm following, I got from Trent Musho of The Brew Show. This came right out of his video on his American Light Lager and I really wanted one. He's got some super high quality videos and maybe it's in the beer, so I figured why not? I'd give it a shot myself. Check the description if you're looking for the specific grain bill, hop schedule, and water profile for this beer. But I need to yank my grains. It's at the end of my mash right now, so I'm gonna yank my grains. Um, this is gonna take a little bit longer to sparge just because I did go for a little bit of a finer crush with my mill today. Um, so I think that's gonna contribute to it taking a little bit longer. I should have used a handful or two of rice hulls, but, and I have some on hand. Um, I just didn't think to toss that in there at all. Um, it's gonna take a second, but it's also gonna take a little bit for the kettle to get all the way to a boil. So really it's not too much to worry about. Um, it's just gonna, it's just a waiting game, like most of brewing. While I wait for this to finish, I'm gonna go ahead and get my 0.2 ounces of Magnum ready. This is gonna be my only hop addition right at the top of my boil. I am only gonna do a 30 minute boil just cause I don't, I don't really think it needs a full 60 minutes and also Trent didn't do it. So if it's good enough for Trent, 30 is good enough for me. Magnum hops often give off peppery and citrusy notes. I'm not expecting too much out of the 10 IBU from this hop, but I do think it's gonna give us just enough flavor for this light lager. A few months ago, I got a fermentation chamber, and this is the first time that I haven't had an ale inside it yet. So right now, I've got it at about 56 degrees, which is the sweet spot. It's right in the middle of its preferred temperature range. So I'm gonna be fermenting this at 56 degrees. I'm gonna let it sit for a week before I actually pull my first sample. When it comes to the final gravity, I'm hoping for about a 10.04. This is the first time that I'm using Ultrafine in it, so I'm hoping that that's gonna dry this beer up like none other, um, and hopefully give me about a 10.04, 10.05 final gravity. If that's the case, this will pump out about a 4.3% beer. Now, despite this being my first tried and true lager, I'm not gonna lager this beer, you know, drop the temperature every few days until it gets to a certain temperature and then leave it there for a couple weeks to help clean and crisp this beer up. Typically, I would use gelatin, but instead, I'm actually gonna use Biofine. Now, I don't have Biofine here. I'm gonna have to either go get it or get it delivered, but instead of gelatin, I'm gonna use Biofine, mostly because you can pitch Biofine right into the keg. Gelatin, you need to get your water hot, and then you need to pour your gelatin in, and then you need to stir it, and then you need to let it chill, and then you need blah, blah, blah. I don't feel like doing all of that, so I'm gonna get some Biofine and just put it right into the keg before I keg it, and hopefully that's gonna do a better job of clearing up the beer, but it'll definitely do it in less time, which is exactly what I'm all about. Our wort is officially boiling. Let's go ahead and get our 0.2 ounces of Magnum ready and get them tossed into the kettle. Let's do this. So my 30 minute timer just started. So I'm able to get this going and now it's just a waiting game. Typically I would use my hop spider for something like this, especially for a beer that I want to be very, very clear. But since I'm gonna be finding it with Biofine later, I really didn't want to put the hop spider in and clean that up or use a bag. So I went ahead and just tossed the hops in without any means for managing the hop debris. I'll figure it out later. I will use a strainer when I'm getting it into the fermenter, but that's really all, probably all I'm gonna do for clarity on this other than adding Biofine. I'm hoping that Biofine is gonna take care of what lack of stuff I'm doing right now. So hopefully that's gonna carry the clarity, ca carry the clarity. I like that. This is that part of brew day where I sit back and relax. This is the, it's a waiting game. So I'm just gonna be sitting here until my, uh, my wort is done boiling and that's gonna be another 20 or so minutes. So this is about the time where I sit back and have a homebrew, take samples, get notes. Um, I'm, pretty do I'm doing pretty well on numbers right now. Um, I was only 0 0.002 points off of my um, pre-boil gravity. So, so far things are right on the right track. 
Once my boil's done in about 20 minutes, I'll be able to add my work chiller in, get it chilled down, and get into a uh, fermenter. So I guess it's about that time for me to start sanitizing as well. So here we are at the end of the boil. About five, 10 minutes ago, I put my work chiller in the boiling work to get it sanitized. And since then, I went ahead and turned it on and we're right underway with getting this chilled down to our pitching temperature. Um, I guess now is not a bad time to go over the yeast that we're gonna use for this beer. And that is Saf Lager W3470. This is a very popular lager yeast and I actually bought like three packs because I'm probably gonna do another couple of lagers before the end of the summer. But I'm gonna be pitching this at about 60 or so degrees or however low I can get my uh, work to get. Here in this Texas summer, I don't expect my, uh, my groundwater to get this work anywhere below like 70 or so degrees. I always have trouble post 90 degrees. So this is gonna be interesting getting it that cool. So I may end up needing to put it in the fermentation chamber before adding yeast, just to help bring the temperature down. We'll see if that's necessary. Um, so we'll cross that bridge later, but here in a bit, once this gets to pitching temps, we'll transfer this into a sanitized fermenter and then we'll aerate and pitch our yeast. Let's get to work. So here we are like 20 to 30 minutes into chilling my wort. Um, this is taking a little bit longer than normal and I imagine that's probably because it's like 90 plus degrees out here in Austin right now. Um, and pre I'm pretty much outdoors. So it's gonna take a little bit for it to chill all the way down to my pitching temps. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just transfer it into my fermenter and then pitch my yeast when it's down to the right temperature. Um, my fermentation chamber is still a little bit lower. I had it at about 40 just because I had a bunch of hops and stuff in there. But I'm gonna take all that out now that the temperature is rising. But other than it taking a little bit longer, we're still pretty much on schedule. So I'm gonna get this into the fermenter and then hopefully use the fermentation chamber to drop the temp a little bit further and then I'll pitch my yeast. So here we are at the end of brew day. The wort is not quite ready for me to pitch my yeast. So it's still sitting in the fermentation chamber right now and probably in like another 30 minutes or so, I'll probably pitch it. Since I'm not lagering this beer, it would turn the five week process down to about a week and a half, maybe two tops if you count carbonation. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, today is Sunday, it's about 4.30. I'm hoping that in two weeks, I should be able to be pouring this and hopefully everything is gonna be ready. All right, so um, as you can tell, I'm in the garage. Uh, it is day six and I just took my first sample um, and this is what we're looking like. And it's not crazy clear just yet, as you can tell, um, but I guess that's what's gonna, that's what lagering is for. So we're sitting at about a 10, 12, 10, 13 gravity right now. Um, I'm super excited to see how this is gonna go. Uh, I did crank the temperature j up just a little bit. We were sitting at about 56 degrees. I raised it at about six degrees or about five, I guess. So we're at 61 right now. Um, I might be brewing in the next week or two, so I don't want um, my fermentation chamber to be just a lager chamber, really. Um, I do want to make sure that it's ready for the ales that I have coming up, so subscribe if you haven't already so you can see what we've got in the works. Um, I do want to make sure it's nice and clean, nice and crisp, so I'm going to let it lager for that. But for clarity, Biofine. I'm going to save my time and just use Biofine. So fingers crossed, let's hope it goes well. So here we are with the final product. 21 days after brew day, we've got an American Light Lager something close to like a Bud Light clone. Um, this is the first time that I used Ultra Firm, so something that was gonna help get more fermentable sugars out of our grains. And it was the first time I used Biofine to help clear up the beer. And this thing is crystal clear. This is absolutely amazing, like uh, how fast it worked and how easy it was. I didn't have to worry about getting water up to about 100 something degrees and then getting my gelatin in it and then cooling it down. All I had to do was put it inside the keg and rack on top of the Biofine. So uh, at about 36, 34 degrees, it cleared it up in about two or three days at a loss of maybe two or three beers, which is just about the same amount for gelatin. So really no harm, no foul there and having to pour out the first few pints to make sure that it is clear. But other than that, this was absolutely amazing. The beer itself does taste good. It does have that grainy kind of smell to it. Um, not a whole lot of flavor, but much, much more than something like a Bud Light would have. So I'll take this over what's on the shelf any day. Our final gravity ended up at about 10.04 which if I did my calculations correctly, that puts us just under 5%, right around 4.8, 4.9%, which is absolutely perfect for this kind of beer. Doing this grain to glass video um, vlog style was a lot of fun. It made for fewer bloopers on my end since it's a little bit more natural. I don't have to worry about putting a mental script together like I always do for some of my other videos. So big uh, shouts to some of the other brew tubers out there that are going about doing this. Um, watching them have that fun 
kind of inspired me to do it myself. So hopefully we can see more videos like this. Um, I'm probably going to do one from time to time and just, just to kind of keep things a little bit different. I can definitely see myself doing another vlog style. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you want to see. But for now, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for viewing. Just brew it. That one's for you, CH. That one's for you.